Hey everybody, it's Goblet X, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. And today we're going to be playing the Murders at Karlov Manor Arena Open Day 2 Draft Number 1. The goal of this draft is to win at least three of the next four rounds. They are going to be best of three rounds. And if we can do that, we will gain qualification into Day 2 Draft Number 2, where there are cash prizes on the line. So without further ado, let's hop into this draft and see where the cards take us today. All right, here we have a look at our pack one pick one, which is a really weak pack overall. The best cards are probably just Repulsive Mutation here as the strongest card individually, but it's pretty narrow. It's got to be in a two color deck, specifically green blue. It is quite powerful, though, later in the game. Best mono colored card is out cold, and that is nowhere near pack one pick one worthy. Yeah, the rares basically unplayable. These uncommons are all a bit narrow and dirtily for their mana costs. This is just a tremendously weak pack to start it off, and there's not even anything I really want to wheel. I guess we can take Repulsive Mutation just for the raw power of the card, and desperately hope somehow out cold wheels, but seems unlikely, so maybe we get an Analyst for a filler 2 drop. Not how I wanted to start this draft, for sure. Alright, pick number 2. Another pretty weak pack all around. There is Unscrupulous Agent for a premium black common. I think here we probably take hard-hitting questions, just sticking to Simic with our first pick. It's a really efficient removal spell if you have a good amount of creatures, ideally ones with decent-sized power. High Alert could be a fun build around. It's the first time I've ever seen it in this draft format because it is one of the cards on the list that shows up very rarely. But, uh... I don't think I'm bold enough to just try to do that in the arena open when I've never attempted that before. I think we just take hard hitting question, but another pretty weak pack overall. A lot of filler that no one's going to want to play, like Demand Answers, Magnifying Glass, Behind the Mask, Candlestick, Laundry, Consultant to an extent. Pick number three. This is a makeshift binding, which is by far the best card we've seen so far in terms of an early pick. Mutation's pretty on par with the power level of it. Hard hidden question's somewhat close, but this card's an incredible uh, early pick in a draft because it's easily uh, splashable, it's easily castable in general. Just a single white. I think we still just take it here, even though we're looking to get into green blue right now. I think it's by far the best card in this pack, and the only cards that would work on our Simic deck are. Just kind of filler. Uh, Vitugazi Inspector would be the best, or Aftermath Analyst, if we want to get some self-mill going. But yeah, these black cards are pretty weak. Tracker is egregiously filler. Detonation is super weak removal. Makeshift Binding is definitely the best card. On to pick four. Murder is an okay removal spell. Don't like these green cards. There's decent stuff in blue, though to keep that blue-green train uh, rolling here. Could also take Meticulous Archive now that we are blue-white and green right now. If we end up in blue-white detectives or if we end up in a green deck splashing in the makeshift binding, this will be very helpful. It's probably worth it over an out cold here. We've seen a lot of out colds. We might be able to get one back, although the general card quality in these packs has been pretty low, so these will probably get scooped up. I guess we'll see. I am going to take this Meticulous Archive, though. Pick number five. Maverick is fine. Gives you an early play in green that sets up your draws with the Surveil. Fills your grave for any Collect Evidence cards. Some of the stronger, grindier cards in the set are Collect Evidence focused. The rest of this pack's pretty weak all around. There's a fine top-end filler creature and a fine early filler creature. But that's about it. Fanatical Strength is a pretty good combat trick for more aggressive green decks, but uh, I think most green decks I end up playing have to be, or tend to be pretty splashy, much slower rather than aggressive. Pick 6, Person of Interest. That's wild. This pack must have been pretty great. So we're only one actual card into blue right now, so I don't think it's unreasonable to think that we could end up green-red aggro, and it's still early enough in the draft that 
maybe we don't end up playing any of these. Maybe we end up in Rakdos or something really weird. So I'm just going to take the best card in the pack, which is Person of Interest. Two creatures off of one spell. Pretty much anything in the set that does that is great. Person of Interest, no different. One of those creatures is going to have Menace, which is great for getting damage in. The Out Cold is the safer pick for sure to just go with everything we have right now. But I think pick six, Person of Interest, is a, a solid sign towards red. And now pick seven, Crime Stopper Sprite's okay in blue. It's much better in like blue white detectives where you do care about the tempo of tapping. It's not that great in like green blue uh, slower decks. So I think I will go ahead and take the red herring here, which is a solid filler two drop in an aggressive red deck. And we're maybe heading that direction off of this person of interest. Pick eight. Well, now we can just go ahead and take the Crime Stopper Sprite this time because Braggart is very filler. I guess we're green, blue, red for now. And based on how weak the first three or four packs were, I think our next four picks are quite likely to just be unplayable cards from here. Well, we got all the blue back out of this pack and all the red. Not that the blue or the red is good. Curious Inquiry can be good if you have a million cheap creatures and most of them have flying, but we don't and we won't. Think I just take Jaded Analyst? A little more blue filler. A little more red filler would have been fine there too. Pick 10. Candlestick, I guess. We're very far from Treacherous Greed. And High Alert as well. That is quite filler. All right, pack two is we just need to see much stronger packs. The highest quality cards that we saw out of pack one was a pick three makeshift binding and like a pick six or seven person of interest. Those were just the best cards. Well, that's not true. Mutations probably still in terms of raw power level, the best card. Um, but again, you don't like starting with gold cards right off the bat. Because then you can't do much when you get the pick six person of interest and stuff like that. Pack two, pick one. All right, we got the shock to go with our red cards. We have a ranger captain of Eos. Three mana, three, three, one enters the battlefield. Search your library for a creature with mana value, one or less. Reveal it, put into your hand, then shuffle. I mean, so that's pretty solid if you have one mana value creatures, but it's double white. So we need to end up really deep into white to play it. Which does not seem the most likely right now. We saw one makeshift binding and nothing else in white out of pack one. Kind of want to head deeper into red, getting pick six person of interest. Grab a shock here nice and early. And shock is a higher pick, a more useful card than forensic researcher, which is the best card to take sticking to our blue. So I'll take the shock here. See if we can go like blue red. Just artifacty, value y stuff as the open colors. Pack two, pick two. There's a furtive courier or a gadget technician. We currently have zero clue tokens. We only have one candlestick that technically can get sacrificed. So we don't have ways to make the courier unblockable, but just getting the triggers on attacks is still pretty decent. I think gadget technician is still better and it's a little bit more flexible. Because if something really weird happens and we do end up in like green red aggro or something, we can still play this off of the disguise flip that hybrid mana cost. Pick three shock, all right. Decently happy to be red here. We could also splash in a coerce to kill as a pretty powerful two for one removal spell where you're dealing with their creature and getting a one one death touch at the same time to deal with one of their attackers in the future. It does require playing around with blue and black. And some of our blue is really filler, like Jaded Analyst, Bubble Smuggler, Candlestick, and Fairy Snoop. Honestly, most of our blue is really filler. So if we take Shock, our red is our best color by far, and we don't necessarily have to play blue if other stuff starts showing up. We can still go for like the green red or something. So I'm going to take the Shock here. All right, well, we're going for the blue. Gleaming Gear Drake here. Oof. Gotta take it over Galvanize, though? That's actually a really difficult pick, because Galvanize is great, efficient removal that's going to go in our red deck no matter what. Gleaming Gear Drake will be really good if we go blue-red. 
because it's a great value play up front, and if we get any other Investigate to go with it, it's incredible. I kind of think we have to just choose where we're at now and just go for the Gear Drake and be blue-red value. But I could see just sticking to exclusively red with how open is how open red is in this draft. But I'm going to lock in here. We'll go blue-red. Go for the Gear Drake deck. And now here we get a Crime Stopper Sprite or a Red Herring for that. So I've already got Red Herring and Gear Drake and Jaded Analyst and Bubble Smuggler. I've got four two drops. I don't think I need another really filler one like Red Herring. I think I could take Crime Stopper Sprite here. Although Red Herring does, does hit pretty good synergies for a Gear Drake kind of deck. You know, I'll still take the Red Herring. I think. Um, Cold Case Cracker is really solid for this deck. Thundering Fall is also very solid. Mana bases tend to be not the greatest in draft as compared to like Instructed, so getting a perfectly on color duel, probably a pretty high pick. I really like this card though. 3 3 Flyer gives you a clue when it dies. It's a little hard to take Thundering Falls over the Cold Case Cracker, but I think I'll do it. Pick 7, uh, Unauthorized Exit. Solid little bounce spell. Could also take Vengeful Tracker. Solid filler 2 drop, just a 2 mana 2-2 two, two on curve. It's good creature type too, if we manage to get the 3 mana 3-2s three that draw a card, discard a card whenever we play a detective. You know what, I should take Tracker over the unauthorized exit. Now a Criminologist is fine at the top end for any deck that can have some clue tokens left over, because then you'd start cracking them for free. Got the Forensic Researcher all the way back around. Looks like we're going to be a little quicker deck than we thought before, where this isn't going to be that useful, but I still think it's better than another Jaded Analyst, especially with this many 2-drops now. So I'll take the uh, Forensic Researcher. Probably better than Fairy Snoop as well. This is a lot of mana. Oh, Furtive Courier looks actually pretty fine for this deck. Um, maybe we can still splash in a um, makeshift binding. We'll see. Alright, get some random top end. And probably cut the mask maker, but we'll see. So pack three, pick one. We have a really filler two mana creature, really filler five mana creature, and filler non-creature spells, so we can just take the rare. 2 mana, 2 one prowess, haste. If we're getting aggressive, that is a good way to get some damage in. If we draw this later in the game, we can play it face down, draw a new hand with it when we flip it up, so it's pretty nice. Pretty flexible. It's the kind of card, though, you need to be really confident. Um, I'm not really confident, but you need to be really okay with just jamming it out and getting your damage in early when it's in your opening hand. Shouldn't always just hold on to it. Like, if you have it in an opening hand that has another 2-drop and a 3-drop and stuff, then you can you can sandbag and hold on to it. But if you don't have a different 2-drop, you should probably always just play it and get your damage in. Pack 3, pick 2. Another Gadget Technician for this deck. Looks A-okay. Fae Flight also looks fine, but I think Technician's a little generally better. It's better in more positions. Fae Flight's better in very specific situations where your opponent's trying to kill your stuff with a removal. Neighborhood Guardian's the best card in the pack, but um, White was just nowhere near open enough to be like Boros here or anything. Alright, nothing for us out of blue or red here, and we can't splash in the black-white Tesa. So we grab a Sanitation Automaton that's unlikely to make the cuts. I guess we do have a candlestick which we can sacrifice to draw a card and then recur with Magnetic Snuffler, but both of these cards are quite weak on their own. I think putting them together for a really weak little combo there is not going to be worth it, so just take the option of Automaton, even though that probably also gets cut. Pick number four, Crime Stopper Sprite, is a fine card. We are going to be tempo y aggro -y here. Actually pretty sad we didn't take one of those out colds early. Don't remember exactly what we took over each copy of out cold, but this deck would really have liked one or two copies. 
So that's looking like the biggest thing we could have done differently in this draft. Is end up with an out cold or two. Pretty happy with the colors we've ended up in. I think this is where we're supposed to be, but this is a, a tempo-y little aggro-y deck. Where out cold really shines as a fantastic card. Um, Dronesmith's fine. It's good with Gear Drake, right? Yeah. It's, it's a good combo with Gear Drake, but I think we're low enough on non-creatures that we'd rather just take the counter or the bounce here, either which are, are pretty decent. I'll take the bounce, because you don't have to hold up the mana for that at the exact right time like you do with a counter spell. And because we are curving out 2, 3, 4, we're not holding that counter spell mana up early really at all. Pick 6. Really don't love Accusation, but with no other removal it might be fine to take that over Surveillance Monitor, which is decent. It's pretty decent, but... Yeah, we've got like no other hard removal. Nothing that deals with really big cards. Yeah, pick 7. We're definitely supposed to be red. Pick 7, Person of Interest. Although Deduce is good synergy for this deck, Person of Interest I think is just strong enough in terms of raw power level to take over the Deduce. Pick eight. There's another accusation. Guess. Yeah, 20 creatures. We've got our options there. Pick nine. Nothing at all. Already got one demand answers I'm not playing. Yeah. So here's a criminologist I'm not playing. Fay Flight. Nothing else, it's a decent sideboard option. Sideboard into candlesticks, candlestick snuffler combo. Oh, we got the reasonable doubt last pick, okay. Might be a decent sideboard option if our opponent has like a really expensive bomber or something. Alright, well... Not super happy here. I think we could have drafted that a little bit better. I think the only thing we really could have done was end up with uh, with one or two out colds. But I think blue red is the the color pair to be in this draft pod. So I don't think we drafted perfectly. This deck could have been a little bit better, but also the draft pod was pretty weak in terms of the power level of the decks we could have ended up with. So not super excited here. But I think this deck can fight, can do its thing. It can try its best, for sure. And we've got Double Accusation now, which are much weaker than Binding, but I think worth uh, sticking to just two color here and having less dirtly mana, less potential mana issues or anything like that. Three more cuts to go. 19 creatures. Candlestick and two creatures, maybe? Just don't really think this is a forensic researcher deck. In fact, any artifact we have for the criminologists. So we don't really have clue tokens sitting around, but... If our thopters aren't useful, then criminologist maybe does a little bit of something. Still might be a cut, though. Like, maybe the 5-5 five, five with basically no ability is slightly better than that 4-5. Probably not, though. I mean, maybe. Because we just have one clue maker. A candlestick. Like, yeah, one of these 5 drops has to go, and neither of them look very good in this deck. But maybe Braggart is actually just better... Try to suspect it in 5-5 five, five minutes for the final bit of damage. They're both quite weak. Automaton doesn't look great. Bubble Smuggler doesn't look awesome. Fairy Snoop is quite mana intensive. There's a lot of filler in here for sure. We can only cut uh, three of them. I guess I will still keep the um, Criminologists. If we're in like a pinch and our opponent is in a really good position or something, and we just need removal or something immediately, it can have like that backup plan of digging, sacking an automaton or a thopter or something. I think that might be a little bit cooler than Braggart. I'm going to ditch the candlestick. 
And I'm going to ditch Jaded Analyst because we basically can never trigger it. And I'm going to ditch the Braggart. The Researcher still has some flexibility, slowing our opponent down with taps on the Collect Evidence. Um, so even if we don't have a lot of top end, like just one 5 drop, one 6 mana flip. Um, so the, the mana untap part doesn't matter too much. The slowing our opponent down can still be fine with some evidence there. So yeah, again... Not super pumped about this deck, but I don't think we maneuvered this draft particularly poorly. The one mistake, the one thing that could have gone better for us, of course, would be having one or two copies of Out Cold. I think that would have been really big. But that's about it, really. I don't think there was any better um, deck to end up in, really. Far as I could tell, there wasn't like a bunch of just tremendous green fixing to try to be the five color mush deck that gets to run that Tesa that we saw in the end or anything like that. I don't think white was open enough for the pivot onto the Ranger of Eos that we got out of pack two. Pretty happy with the move on to red here. Most of our best cards are the red ones. So taking that pick six person of interest and running with it getting a couple shocks as well, some gadget technicians, and uh, Gear Drake for being in red feels decent. Yeah, I think overall, decently navigated. The deck could have been slightly better, but certainly could have been a lot worse if we just kept bouncing around too long or we tried to like force into white for that, that Captain of Eos, so... We'll, uh, we'll roll with it. We'll call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at our final deck list for today. We're on a pretty average blue-red tempo deck where we're going to be curving out with a lot of just general red and blue aggro creatures on curve. Stuff like Red Herring to get early damage in. Fugitive Codebreaker as well with that haste can start ticking that clock early. And then a bunch of flying threats or just evasive threats in general later with Crime Stopper sprites in the sky, Person of Interests with Menace, Gadget Technicians making more flying cards. And then once we've got all that stuff on the board, we just want to use cheap ways to lock down our opponent's creatures, bouncing them, tapping them, or shooting them, as well as just our one counter spell in the end game in case our opponent tries to bomb us out in the end. So hopefully we get some decent hands and we can curve out nice and quick. I think this deck is pretty mediocre, pretty average for sure, so we're going to have to hope for some pretty great luck to try to win three out of these next four rounds, but I don't think our deck could have been too much better uh, with the way that our, uh, our draft pod shaped up. We certainly had one or two opportunities to have an out cold, though, and that would have been perfect for this deck. That would have really gotten the tempo going. That's a great way to get your last couple swings in and uh, finish your opponent off in these tempo decks. So really, really missing out on an out cold or two here. So that is the biggest flaw with the deck, but it can still do its thing. It's still absolutely got a mana curve. And if we draw well, we can play some games of magic here. So without further ado, let's head into the gameplay and see how it does. Here we are for round one on the play. Mono blue opening hand with no threats, really. A single 2-2 two, two for three mana. I don't really think this is how our deck wants to start out. We want to try to curve out in the early game. And obviously we always want to have both our colors as well. I think we, we got to mull this. Okay. So now we can red herring into technician into person of interest. Forensic research is the only thing that doesn't really fit in. So we can ditch that. If we draw a single land in our first three draw steps, then everything in the hand is castable. Even if we don't, we can still play the technician on three and uh, flip it off of just two mana. Do you find a crime stopper sprite. So now I can roll with that on turn three if we want to... Um, just hard cast technician later. Alright, there's a push on the red herring. Our opponent's going to slow this game down with that play. How much do we want the enter the battlefield effect of the sprite, or do we want to be more mana efficient? If I draw another land, I can still play this face down and flip it turn 5 anyway. Or I could play this face up and flip this. That's on the ground. 
I'm gonna play this face down, I think. And the plan is to play person of interest here. And then turn five, we could sprite plus flip up. I think this is reasonable. Ooh, gear drake. Interesting. They've got all the mana up here. They could have the common or the uncommon counter spell. Counter unless we pay two is the common. If they have the uncommon, it's counter unless we pay three, which would be a bummer, but if they have the common counter spell, we can play around it by casting Gear Drake and still have the mana to flip up our technician here. Sick. Okay. This is a fine deal for us, because we still get our clue token. So we're up a card in that exchange. A cash out for damage here, get one more point of damage in, and make my board a little wider to attack next turn. Let me get the notepad, because I don't know if my, uh, my view of the board in between games is going to work today. So it hasn't been working lately, so push-pull, make your move. Okay. Play around the two-mana counter again with Crime Stopper Sprite here, because they keep holding up two. Obviously no value from the Crime Stopper Sprite ETB, but... We get to be perfectly mana efficient here, and make sure our spell doesn't get countered. Five mana from our opponent. They're getting close to needing a full-on board wipe at this point, down to 11. That's pretty good. Get a 2-2, two, two, make it a 3-3. Three, three. I mean, our only creature on the ground is a 3-2, a so it still attacks in against that. Just trades at worst. So we're still pretty fine with that. There's another gadget technician that's beautiful. There's Accusation. I would have to fully tap out, but I could lock their face down here. I don't mind the trade for technicians, so I'm not going to do that. They trade, they trade. Okay, and they are not going to trade. This might be a lifelinker, then? The only thing that would make a ton of sense to me, it's the hybrid black-white card, maybe? I mean, I could kill it, but let's just see what it is here. It's not that likely to be a lifelinker. There's only one disguise lifelinker in the format. It is common, but like if this is anything else, if it's going to be a giant 6-7 reach or whatever, anything like that, that could hit me for a million or could block well, that's fine. Because I'm just going to have a really wide board state. They can only block one creature with it. Okay. Okay. Gonna pass with all the mana open. Flip another gadget technician, and there's the concession for our opponents. And here's where I'm gonna be really irritated if the uh, screen is still black for me. Yeah, because I'm supposed to legally get to know what their disguise card is, and I don't know what it is. Sick. Um, so we saw a make your move and a push pull. Fay Flight seems fine. Against those kind of cards. We are going to be on the draw here, so it is reasonable to just cut a land in a more aggressive deck. When you're on the draw, you know that you are seeing eight cards before you even play your first land. It just automatically digs you closer to the next land that way, so we'll put in the Fae Flight, cut a mountain. Um, but I really, I'm supposed to be able to know what their face down is, and I don't, because for some reason, for me specifically, and nobody else, I can't view Battlefield. So I'm going to need to submit a ticket on that, but we should know what their face down is. It'd be very useful information for future games when they have a face down on board. Could add our opponent as a friend and DM them, be like, what was your face down? It's against the rules for you not to tell me what your face down was. Arena didn't tell me what your face down is. Alright, Analyst is a solid start. Red Herring is great into the Analyst, though. Just get it out of the way immediately. I'm 
There's the face down again. Just shock it. They do seem like the kind of deck where the face downs are going to be something big. Would have known for sure if Arena worked right for me. But I imagine the face down was something like the 6 7 last game. Yeah, or a 5 5 Crocodile, just one of the big doofuses. Four mana, their Season Consultant. Holding up the two. Ah, that's our weakest spell. Weakest spell is probably Bubble Smuggler. It will be a 6 5 later, but. It's hard to curve out with it here, right? If I'm just throwing out counter bait, I throw out this, this gets countered next turn, then I play like Technician face down and flip it. And then. Yeah, turn six, I play a face down smuggler. I don't flip it till like turn seven. So yeah, smuggler doesn't fit in the curve super well, but we've got the six mana for it, so maybe it is better than just the two two flyer. We definitely don't play technician because next turn we have the perfect um the perfect play around the counter spell. Where we play it face down and then flip it for two. And maybe they just haven't had the counter spell the whole time. They've just had awkward curves where they've had two extra mana sitting there. Really weird, because like if they don't have instants to hold up, they really should do everything in their power to be mana efficient. Uh, two mana flip that would kill Sprite. I don't think there are any. Ah, uh, Granite Witness. That would trade. But yeah, there's there's nothing that should just like kill it, kill it. Two cards in their hand. I kind of like getting a bubbly smuggly going. But the 3 2 body does attack in well immediately. This is fine, too. Maybe we can get them to make your move a Thopter instead of a 6-5 if they have the make your move in hand. Destroy something with power 4 or greater or an artifact or enchantment. Well, a Thopter is an artifact, so they might be like, well, there's my target. But grudgingly do it, and then now our 6-5 is fine. Honestly, I don't think it would be that unreasonable for them to do that, because they haven't seen really any creatures with power four or greater in our deck. So I could see the Stopter actually working as uh, as make your move bait. Oh, repulsive mutation? No thank you. It's a really good unauthorized exit turn. Uh, keep that. Now, counter unless I pay one, which I can pay, because one is their greatest power now. What a well-timed unauthorized exit. That would have been completely backbreaking. That would have been the instant win from our opponent there. Okay. They can't buff the eavesdropper on blocks, because it won't be a second card drawn. So let's just send in the team. I'm pretty happy to just bounce here if they offer that. I don't need to eat consultant right now when I can just get a wider board state first, especially when if I flip this up to eat the consultant, then they can just go ahead and tap it with the granite witness super easily. But if I have two different face downs ready to attack in next turn, then they don't really know what they want to stun with the witness flip. They're not stun, but just tap. I guess I won't have two face downs though, because I do kind of have to flip up uh, and get my 1 1 flyer first here. Okay, there's a push, destroy a tapped creature again, sure. Okay, they've got exactly the mana to flip up Granite Witness, but they don't have the mana to actually pay for Disguise. So we're pretty confident this is Granite Witness, which makes it actually more worth it to not flip. Just so they don't tap our 3 2. I guess that would have been worth it if I played this land so I could have the mana to flip Bubble Smuggler and the Technician. Since I don't have the mana to flip both and I definitely want to flip Smuggler, I think I still have to flip this now. 
Even though it gives them a great target for the Granite Witness tap. Ooh. Okay, that means we get to attack in with everybody and not worry about a Thopter trading into Granite Witness. Well, not trading in. That's the issue. We don't have to worry about a Thopter dying to Granite Witness. Um, full control just to make sure it lets me cast spells before they declare blocks there. Actually, it probably would even if I didn't go full control mode, but it's not worth the risk when I'm not confident. In Arena's auto phase passing. Okay, they don't have the mana for that to be a 5-5. Five five. They've only got four mana up here, so... Oh, uh, well. Solid. Ooh. And eliminate the impossible to kill my creature and draw a card? That worked like an incredible trick for our opponent. Person of interest is huge. Hotshot Investigators. Okay, opponent's drawn straight gas now. Eliminate into Investigators is a great couple turns. It's huge. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, good draws are good. There are good draws to go around all over this board, though. So our Bubble Smuggler gets double blocked and kills 1-4-4. Four, four. Block there, take 1-2-3-4-5. Yeah, not yet. We can spend the turn on Gear Drake. I don't think I have any double red cards. I don't think I have double blue either, but... Just do it the manual way here. All right, well, it is nothing. Um... Really need them to miss here. If they play absolutely nothing, then I think we can all attack next turn. At the very least, we get to start sending the Gear Drake in. But yeah, they have they have two draws this turn, so they're pretty unlikely to completely miss. Maybe they didn't? Nope. Yeah. All right. We are dying here. Best land in our deck at this point. Worst land in our deck at this point. Again, if I send in that bubble smuggler and clear out a single 4-4, I do get some damage in elsewhere, which is nice. But then everything just gets roadblocked by the 4-4s again in the future. I mean, they are kind of forced into two 4-4s four on the 6-5 on one attack, so at least we get, like, five damage in, and none of our creatures die for nothing here. All right, because if they kill this, double block there, they take six, go to four. Yeah, one less damage, probably worth sending this exactly in. I don't see any line where they are going to not double block our 6-5 with two 4-4s four here. But maybe, maybe they will just let it in and go to like 2 to clear out two 2-2s. Two or chump with Granite Witness, either of which would be just awesome for me. Yeah, I think they have to just put two... Oh my god. They're going to go to two life. They're going to go to dead to shock. I mean, that is, that's a choice. You got it. I guess they want to try to just top deck removal. This is bold. They top deck removal. I am dead. They're actually at one life on board because we have a menace threat. They can only block two of our three creatures, so they have to let the Thopter in. See, I should have kept Candlestick. Candlestick would be lethal off the top. 
Uh... Okay, now they literally can't double block Bubble Smuggler or they're dead. They have to double block Person of Interest, single block Bubble Smuggler. Take one. Unless they top deck to an instant. If they don't have an instant, we have to just send in here. If they do have an instant, I... I'm kind of doomed. I think I have to just make them have it here. Yeah. They can't uh, They can't go for the kill on the smuggler here. They have to go to one, which means the Thopter kills them next turn. That's not the block I was imagining, but it has the exact same end result, so... Oh, right! <laughs> they can then just lethal me. Alright. What if I attacked with just the 6-5 and the 2-2 two, two Menace, then? They still have to block both creatures. Which means they have to put two creatures onto the person of interest. Oh, no, yeah, that was the that was the attack right there. Attack with the person of interest and the bubble smuggler. Keep the Thopter back. All right, I see. Yeah, I just did not quite calculate that they had exact eight on the crack back there. Close game. That would have been a way better attack if we went for that. They still could have drawn into something that would kill us. We'll never know what they did draw because they didn't need to cast anything to kill us at that point. But that might have thrown it. Alright, game three. I'm guessing their face downs have just been granite witnesses the whole time. Based on that game, they had just a million granite witnesses. 100% on the play, 100% unkeepable. This is really slow. It's really slow and monocolored somehow. We have nine blue sources and nine red sources because we have a duel. We've drawn two monocolor openers in the first round alone. Oh man. Well, if the black screen in between best of three rounds wasn't enough, we get a little bit more solid proof that Arena has really disliked me lately. Well, we're down two cards no matter what. We're starting on a mold to five, so that is an instant huge drop in potential win percentage here. We can do our best. Definitely got to keep the automaton, I think, to set up our draws. I think we ditch land three drop. All right, now we're trying to make it to four mana. Draw a great four mana creature. Ooh, that does some work to help try to get there. I actually like that a whole lot here. We have not seen a reasonable doubt out of them. We haven't seen a single counter spell actually out of them. So I will just roll with the gear drake. Oh, the classic. The classic get got by the counterspell game three when you don't see it in the first two games. All right, I mean, Gear Drake was by far our best play because we could then set up to hold up the clue and use Reasonable Doubt if we need to. Now we're drawing more three mana plus spells. We have to surveil. Shock is a great card, but we need mana. If this was our opening seven, and we just also had two more lands by being up two more cards, if our sixth and seventh card was land, land, this hand would have been so busted. But now it looks like we're just dying. Yeah. All right, now Red Herring is forced into a Trump attack, which means we got to spend the mana on cracking that here. Or just go down another card. But it is still not the land. Yes, I ditched to land, but I ditched to land because the hand was three two drops. Wouldn't have been so painful to ditch the land if we didn't draw 
bunch of fours and threes. And there's always the alternate universe where I keep the land, ditch a two drop, and then just draw three or four lands in a row. And then it's like, well, why did you ditch the three drop? You should have ditched the land. You just can't really control it. Set up a furtive courier here. They are down to 12. Like, there's something going on here. It's probably a granite witness that we can trade into. Oh. First Museum Nightwatch we saw, unless that was their face down game one. If it was, I should have known that they had Museum Nightwatch in their deck, but Arena didn't tell me. Alright, now I need. Oh boy. I need Crime Stopper Sprite to trade into Griff Knot Tracker and Automaton to trade into the 2 2 on the ground. Consultant triggers and we take four. Gonna be a 3 2 flyer that I die to because I don't have flying of my own. I think we just person of interest. Or I could face up Bubble Smuggler to try to get the trade there and have a reasonable doubt up. Yeah, I mean, the 2 2 menace part of the person isn't super helpful right now. They are down to 12. The person is kind of just playing a 2 2 blocker for me at this point of the game. Just straight past the turn. Okay. We drop a face down, hold up the reasonable doubt then. I pass. One instant engrave. Takes all my mana to use this face down. Draw a new hand. If I draw a person, I don't hold up reasonable doubt, and they just hit their first green source, so the odds of them playing something good next turn are really high. So I think we track her then. And obviously we have no attacks into a 2-4. Yeah, I mean, tracker or just hold up the flip, I think either would be fine. Although if we held up the flip, like, we're discarding three cards to draw three cards. I don't think it's that that valuable here. All right. Our opponent hasn't attacked in a million turns, so we've got the slightest chance. Give any of these menace. And then they can't block, and I'm at five. It's still a good way to try to get damage in though, so I'm gonna do it. I guess I could suspect one of their creatures with this. The consultant. Since I already want to double block it, yeah, that was loose. If we suspected the consultant, like it's already a card we wanted to double block. So like it wouldn't be bad at all. to play around uh, second reasonable doubt by playing person of interest pre-flip here and we're gonna flip during combat if they make me man and now they double block. 
We get nothing. There are five cards up here. Yeah, I should have suspected Consultant. Then this turn, we could attack with everybody. They can kill a 2-2. Two, two. Take 6. Yeah, that would have been our... Um, our line for attempting lethal. Just try to go wide around their blocker. Multiple turns in a row. But with five or six other cards in their hand right now, I think they're bound to have interaction that would have made it just not matter anyway. A maker move and a fey flight? Cool. All right. Well, I don't think that game was winnable. Obviously, it would have been better to suspect their consultants and try to crack in with everybody, but they were just up so many cards. Um. Yeah. Our, our one shot at victory there was the ending of game two, uh, where we punted with the full swing. If we swung with just the menacing 2-2 two -two and the 6-5, they would have still had to block the exact same way. So we could have gotten rid of their, their flyer to stop that from killing us. Um, and... And then we could have chump blocked one of the four fours if they didn't draw removal. I think they had three cards at the end of the game in their hand because they had two. They were just sandbagging and their draw step for turn. So they might have had an interaction that would have just killed us anyway. They just had no reason to play it because we were already dead on board. So we don't know if like we 100% punted away the game, but uh, we probably punted away the game. Game two, which would have won us the round. So yeah, bummer. Bummer, because I think it was definitely a winnable, winnable round, our deck versus theirs. Our deck is just a little more consistent and streamlined. Theirs has higher individual power with cards like Intrude and Repulsive Mutation and Eidetic Memory being pretty gross. But yeah, ours is just a little more, more consistent for sure, is how we really got that first win and could have maybe gotten the second win. Game three, Arena said you lose. Nothing much there. Um, but there are things to, to try to do different in the future. If your opponent only has one or two creatures, being able to suspect one of those cards to just shut it off as a blocker is kind of a big deal, so that is nice for the future. So, kind of a bummer to start it off. Kind of a self-imposed 1-2 here and around that could have been 2-0, uh, potentially. Again, we'll never know for sure, but uh, we 100% made the wrong play regardless, even if they did have a way to survive. Um, or not even a way to survive, a way to kill us, right? Because it's not like we would have lethaled them in the next two turns, even if we did that the right way. We would have sent in the 2-2 two -two Menace and the 6-5. They would have killed the 2-2 two -two Menace, but lost their flyer. Then the board state would still be two 4-4s four versus a 1-1 one -one flyer and a 6-5. But that 1-1 one, one flyer could then try to kill them in two swings. Unless they went aggressive and, and sent one in, then I'd have to chump. Then it's 1-4-4 four, four versus a 6-5. Which means if they top decked even like a 2-2, two, two, they would win the games. And they double block the 6-5 and they've got a little more cards than me. So I think we actually, even if we played that outright, we wouldn't have killed them for at least two more turns if they drew absolutely nothing. So it still would have would have ended as a top deck war. So it wasn't like missed lethal level of punt, but it was bad. It was not a great way to start the events. Either way, irregardless, we've got three rounds and we're going to have to win all three rounds if we want to make it to day two draft two. I don't think our draft bot had the power to do it, but we'll see. It had the power to maybe win round one and we threw that away. So hopefully at least we will not throw any potential chances away in these future rounds. Let's see how we can do in round two. Here we are for round two, massively flooded, but we can surveil one with our very first land play. And start with Codebreaker isn't terrible. I mean, on the draw, it's pretty bad, right? Because it means that we're going to play it with haste when they've already played a three drop. 
Well, no, we'll play with haste when they played a two drop, but then the turn after we play it, they already have a three mana two two to block trade with it. I still don't think we can mulligan this, um, but it, it, it is pretty bad. Actually, on the draw. All right, red herring. So we'll just fly right past each other. Yeah, again, when you don't have another two drop, you probably should just go two, three, four, even with the card like Code Breaker. So let's do that. Courier is actually pretty sweet. Um, with reasonable doubt to try to get it to uh, the menace. God, that card's insane. That it triggers off of itself. So they can trade off and just go up a card with a clue. Yeah, it doesn't say when one or more other non-token creatures you control dies, so... That is a strong rare for cheap. And that is strong cheap removal. Galvanize for our furtive courier. It's like we're just getting beat down with our opponent on the play. Uh got a pretty great curve for holding up reasonable doubt because next turn I can play the technician face down and hold it up. So I'm gonna do that. See if I can go tracker for investigator here. Oh boy. <laughs> I make any trades on blocks and they're just gonna have mounds of cards. Got an eight here. I mean, we do shoot them for two when they sack the clues, maybe. I'm already not blocking with this thing. Gear Drake's exciting. Better than getting a 3-2 and a 1-1 one, one this turn? Probably not. It's probably our play next turn. Block Investigator. They're pretty much playing off the top now. And there's Murder. If I go to two, I'm dead to shock. They're at ten. One, two, three, four, five. We need two blockers up. And we need them to not hit more removal. So if I hit them for four, they're down to six. If I survive their crack back with two blockers, then I'm still only hitting them for four. But thanks to Vengeful Tracker, they, they put themselves dead if they sack any red herrings or clues or anything to dig, so I think we need them to just not have more removal, and we will play to that out. So if they have more removal and I hold up the three blockers here, I'm still gonna go to two and have nowhere near enough to kill them on the crack back anyway. And then I still end up losing this game, but at least this way um, we have the shot at getting the counterattack lethal, like if we top deck shock or something, or if they crack a clue. It's not a top deck at all. Now we have to... We have to hold back. Yeah, and they can afford to use a clue because we had to hold back. 
so they can dig for the removal or the haste. And they need two blockers or removal. Oh my god. All right. Good start to the round, scary stuff, but we very slightly pull out the victory for game one. I forgot to keep notes. They had Galvanize, Murder, two of the fish, the red herring, one of the Investigate Black Rare, 2-2, two, two, Black, Rare, Investigator. And that's pretty much all we saw. We countered a... a face down, and I forgot to check what it was. Alright, I mean, seems like a Fae Flight matchup. They're black, red, two very removal-heavy colors. I think that's it. I mean, Behind the Mask wins combat against all the 2-2s. Two So that's kind of interesting, I guess. Yeah, Dramatic Accusation kind of feels like a lot to just deal with a 2-2, is what it's doing in this matchup for the most part, so I kind of like a flight behind the mask over Double Dramatic, but we will be um, on the draw so we can kind of land also and just keep one of these accusations, so we will do that, cutting a mountain, heading into game two. Can't really mulligan this. Early shock seems really good in this matchup, especially on the draw. Alright, well, we just turned the tempo in our favor. Now we are the one with fish. This is like Yakuza when you start beating people up with a giant bass from the market. For Uncharted 3, the fish market brawl. My entire life is a video game reference. That's so funny that the sprite has to tap something. Ooh. Drone Smith makes herring very bad. Two drop. Hey, let's go. All shot. What it's all about. Yeah, maybe we should have surveilled first. Nope, because we would have kept that on top. And now we get to surveil the land into the grave? No, that's also a good card. Well, would not have got any surveil value either way. So that's hitting us for three a turn. And there's a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, that's big. That is big. I mean, we play a 4-5, right? Better than two two twos or a 3-2 right now. Is Automaton weak enough to ditch it for a card right now? Not yet. But I could see myself doing that on an attack in the future. They're going to suspect that. I already can't really do anything but double block it. They have way too much instant speed removal to try to double block right now. Because, like, even if they don't have any interaction, we lose both our creatures. Well, I guess no, we don't, because five toughness. But if they have even just, like, shock or galvanize, then we lose both our creatures without even killing that, which is horrific. Okay, so I could have six mana if I played on tapped land, which isn't enough for both our spells anyway, so we play the tapped land and see what's coming up first. Technician, it's a good one. Would like multiple creatures, but uh one of the creatures from Person of Interest can't block anyway. Alright, we gotta be fully on blocks, and it's not looking great.
Red herring. Maybe they haven't drawn any of that uh, that removal outside of that long goodbye here. They actually do get a double block kill. Now is when they show us fuss. Put a plus one plus one counter on every creature they have. We're actually really close to just dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. Yeah, that is astronomically close to just dead. That's the best I can do, right? Most damage I can stop. I guess I could stop one less point of damage this turn to get rid of the uh, drone smith for future turns. It's kind of cool. And maybe leave both of these blockers, like if they crack the red herring. I just take a full 8 here, but if I take a full 8, I'm dead to a shock. We haven't seen a shock from them, but I'm also dead to a single 2 power creature getting through. It's not going to be great either way, right? Because even if I do the double block on the Braggart to kill it, that just means that they're going to have another flyer coming in with Dronesmith, which is more damage still. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna do this. I think we can play around Shock. So if we have four blockers up and they have no removal, we're still in it. Would you look at that? I have exactly the cards to have four blockers up. In fact, if they have no removal, we just win. If they have removal, then we just lose. So it's entirely on that. If they have removal, they win. If they don't, then we win. Because then their, their attacks are really bad, actually, against those four creatures. Alright. I think that was the best line, because it led to the, the four creatures make them have it removal here. Where, again, if they didn't have the removal, their attacks are horrendous. And if they don't attack, they have no blockers up. If I can uh, just keep getting in. I think that's about as much as we could have uh, turned it around there. All right, we're just going to have to go to game three and hope that uh, the play draw advantage is going to get us there here. Um, so we saw two long goodbye for cheap removal. We saw the... F um, oh, we didn't see long goodbye. We just, we just saw one long goodbye, I think. Uh, but we also saw the big 5-5 five, five rubble belt thing. And we saw person of interest. So the big rubble belt thing, uh, accusation is pretty good against, so that might uh, call for another one of those. I mean, Fae Flight would have been really good at any point in that match, so... Well, no, because we would have had to hold mana up for it, and we couldn't have afforded to hold the mana up for it um, at any point there anyway. Play another 4-5 against all these 2-2s, two trying to stabilize late. It's another option. I guess the Researcher is fine against 2-2s two as well. I think I'm just going to mainly do what I <laughs> just had before still. Yeah, I think I'm just going to run it back and I'll just keep 16 lands on the play. I think that's fine. Like, maybe we should cut the 2-2 the two, two flyers for 3, because they end up just trading into stuff on the ground. But if we're on the play, maybe they will be worth it. Maybe we can be aggressive enough. Oh. Do have more blue than red. We are still running 9 blue sources in the deck. We can shock their first creature no matter what, and any land gets us to the Technician. If we find the blue source, we have 4 out of 5 mana, thanks to Forensic Researcher, but if we don't hit a land quick, we are doing pretty much nothing. Just a shock. And a mulligan. Alright, this hand is not much better, but here we are. Maybe should have ditched behind the mask, but it can protect Crime Stopper. We can beat 1-2-2 two, two with behind the mask. There we go, that's a big play. Can kind of just immediately make up for the mulligan, just a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two that draws us a card. 
Puts us back to seven. Okay, there's red herring. Start a chain of Crime Stopper sprites. Right behind the mask and crack a clue. This is so silly. This is so silly. I could cash it in for four damage to them, but I think we cash it in to kill a red herring and then draw a card. <laughs> what am what am I sideboarding today? Oh. So we kill a red herring or we kill a removal spell here. And we draw a card when we do it. Cool, we kill a red herring. <laughs> we did the thing. <laughs> All right. Ooh, hit the person of interest mana for doing that. That feels great. They got the shock up here. They've got something for one. No. They they could just be playing in full control mode, I guess. Say so if they have the shock, I think they would they'd do it here. At least by the end step when we were all tapped out. Homicide investigator, it's the investigate rare. And long goodbye on the flyer. Okay. I will trade a 2 2 into your 2 2 card draw engine. Cool. Three, three tapped, sure. Everything's got flying and menace right now. Oof, these are really good spells to hold up in conjunction. Especially if we end up casting Fey Flight first, because then Unauthorized Exit gets to be a second copy of Fey Flight. I mean, it won't also get the, the plus one plus zero, but we can redo the Hexproof. They're at 11. We've got six evasive power on the board. Two turn clock. We have two ways to protect our stuff. Command answers. All right, they're just digging. Got a lot of cards over there, though. They're racing. Yeah, I guess they can't block without more creatures anyway, so might as well send in for three. Go for the slice on the Crime Stopper. Well, here's Hexproof. This isn't technically countering the spell. It is making it so the spell has no legal targets, so it doesn't resolve. Now they're down to four... Any two of these creatures stick around, they're dead. And a shock on top, so they're real dead. There's the concession, okay. Ooh, some tight, stressful games there, but we are going to be one and one now. We are still in contention for draft number two if we can win the next couple rounds. So we are one and one, heading into round three. Here we are on the play for game one of round three. Playing against a blue deck. Definitely want to start with Gear Drake or Automaton because we want to hit lands. Both have an ability to help get there. Kind of like Automaton first, because it helps me try to find a land for free, whereas Gear Drake, I do have to spend mana on the clue next turn. All right, cool. 
And then we can play Courier turn three. That gives us a way to draw and discard digging towards lands without having to spend mana as well. And if we hit a fourth land turn four, then we got sick combos going. Ooh, blue-white deck with Neighborhood Guardian turn two. Probably a nice little tempo aggro deck. Some blue-white detective-y stuff. We're still on the play here with a handful of creatures on curve, so we are still going to beat down and play the aggressive role. They could flip it on us, though, with the right really efficient creatures like Neighborhood Guardian. Which, speaking of... And start my notepad up. Really don't hate the courier for guardian trade, but I do need to uh, lock in that fourth land, get my first draw discard here. So I think I can't afford to do that. All right, well, I hit the land anyway. That's a little sad, a little awkward. But, you know, it is what it is. I don't think I need to give courier unblockable. I could, um, but trading for a face down seems fine too before they can flip it up and get any dogs off of it or a 2 2 body or anything like that. So. Let's offer the trade and then cast Gadget Technician here. Post combat. It's a slightly better land. They're down to 13. Let me get this board nice and wide. Novice Inspector, wow, they have card quality over there. I mean, we've only seen two of their cards. They played two face-ups, but the two face-ups they've played have got me very envious. Neighborhood Guardian, one of the best white uncommons. Novice Inspector, the best white common. They hold everybody up on blocks. It's time for Furtive Courier to shine, but this kind of makes me feel that their face down is a Granite Witness, and they're just going to tap the Furtive Courier here. Still feel like Gear Drake's the best play because it will dig for land number five. Or just get me some more action either is fine. I did have a land five I could have discarded Fairy Snoop for, but the only reason I want land five is because of Fairy Snoop wanting like land six. Okay, bubbly smuggly. No Granite Witness over there. This could be a Gadget Technician. They get a 1-1 one -one at instant speed to trigger Neighborhood Guardian, which means we wouldn't want to attack in with Automaton if that's the case. Because if they tri trigger Neighborhood Guardian at instant speed, Automaton dies for nothing. Um, and the Thopter dies for nothing if they do that, so... We can play around Gadget Technician by not sending in the 2-1 and the 1-1, or we can just go full aggro and just send. This is probably way too safe, but I'm going to not... I'm going to play around Gadget Technician being the face down. This is 6 to flip. This is 3 to play, 3 to flip. That's a lot of mana, too. And getting some mana value in Grave feels good. So I'm going to put a Fairy Snoop in the Grave here. Towards these Crime Stoppers. Okay, that's just an unflippable face down right now. They're just cracking a clue. So we just missed out on a couple points of damage here. I'm surprised by this, but yeah, now we get to kill Neighborhood Guard and we don't even have to worry about instant speed plus one plus ones. And we have the evidence. If we hit another land, we can tap two of their creatures, one of which we're going to permanently stun. And we'll have just four more flyers, or four more power in the sky setup. Okay, they got two mana up over there that they're holding on to. And we have the, the six mana here. Let's do the thing. Stun the analyst. Get this sprite countered. No. Tap Inspector too. Show me the face down at this point. Okay. Uh, shock's a little... little enticing with our opponent about to go pretty low on life. 
And all their creatures are shockable right now, so... We're taking a shock over a bubble smuggler. I mean, the smuggler just really doesn't fit in the curve well. I have to play it face down and then flip it the turn after to actually get the 6-5, otherwise it's just a 2-mana two 2-1, two or a 3-mana 2-2, two two, which shock is much better than. Okay, I mean, they're down to 5. I feel like with a shock in hand, they're super, super likely to die. They need, like, the board wipe, and I think we can still win through the board wipe because we've got a courier in hand now. We draw a card off the clue. Okay, 7 is good. Makeshift binding is, is really good here. Okay. Courier doesn't affect my combat at all. If we can send in with the flyers and they don't do anything about it, then they just die to a shock. I don't think there's any reason to cast anything here. Okay, they're just going to concede. We are in an arena open event, so I'm just trying to play around everything possible. Slightly surprised they would concede, because even if your opponent is playing around ghosts, you can just make them whittle down their clock. So if we go to game three, I might time out <laughs> if I think too hard. So that must mean they had just nothing there. Um, yeah, the way that Magic the Gathering rules is written works is I'm supposed to be able to see what their face down is since the game has ended, but I can't. Now, being able to view the battlefield after the game, that's not like just a rule of magic. That's just a nice thing that Arena lets you do. But seeing their face downs, I'm supposed to get that information, and it's real frustrating that I can't. I will actually go ahead and file a, a, a report or whatever for that uh, so they can get that fixed, because apparently it's not a thing for everybody. It's just for very few people, myself included in that group. It's pretty annoying. So we only saw um, makeshift binding an unauthorized exit for the Fey Flight, so I don't know if we throw it in here. I mean, certainly we're on the draw. We we put it in over a, a mountain and go for the 16 lander here. But I don't know how well it's going to play. I think it's better than anything else we'd throw in here, so we'll, we'll try that out and head into game two. Forced Mulligan here. Gets us a four lander, which is a three lander. Three mana, a two drop, and two disguise cards. Yeah. I wonder if there's an argument to just like siding out red herrings on the draw, swapping them out for a jaded analyst, and then nothing else. Because we we have a good amount of two mana creatures. I mean, so far so good. Red herring's gonna actually do something. Black white this game. Interesting. So they're probably all three colors, yeah. Ghostly Prison? Well, that's super annoying. Okay. Uh, Alright, then. We don't get to attack. The strange and rare non-attacking red herring. Man, what are the odds? We're gonna get demolished by a ghostly prison. Has to be really low, right? That somebody opens up a ghostly prison. A mythic rare from the very, very super special slot. Oh boy. Oh, so much mana to send in. Yeah, they just have all the time in the world to set up however they want here. I guess means the pace of the game just grinds to a halt and we can set up as well. I'm going to have to attack with Red Herring now, aren't I? Because I'm going to have the two mana. I'm not playing a face-up bubble smuggler. How does Ghostly Prison work with Red Herring? Will it let me attack with something else and pay the two, and then Red Herring doesn't have to attack? Probably not. I guess I can just crack it instead of attacking with it then, if it's going to be forced into the attack anyway. Let's see, maybe I can draw into something that I can spend two mana on. Well, <laughs> that doesn't exactly count.
Yeah, so I have to, I'm gonna have to send in Red Herring and pay the two or just crack it and draw a card. Unless I just play a bubble smuggler. Which I don't wanna do because a six five is big here. Awkward. Red Herring Ghostly Prison looked like a combo for a little bit, but actually kinda sucks here. Now. Another face down. Send in the Vigilante. Vigilante's doing gross stuff. Show me like a big combat trick here. Okay, no combat trick. We're pretty happy with that. Six mana to flip up a bubble smuggler. So I can drop a couple three drops for the turn. Let's get the mana set up with Forensic Researcher. Defenestrated Phantom, 5-4 Flyer, and I am dying. So, I don't have the evidence to stop the Phantom. Got 7 mana if I need it, 3 for this, 2 for this, 2 for this, 3 for 5, 6, 7. I don't think we want to play another red herring right now though. So three for this, two to attack, and two for reasonable doubt. That's probably fine. We want to have the evidence for Crime Stopper Sprite to stun the Defenestrated Phantom. So we really want to cast Reasonable Doubt here. Or we want to just get a Furtive Courier attack in. That's a possibility too. Discard a Red Herring. Oh. Okay, so we're not going to counter anything with Reasonable Doubt. So <laughs> we don't need to untap. So let's tap one of these. Take five. God, yeah, if they didn't have the ghostly prison, they'd be like so dead. But having to spend so much mana to attack them, like, definitely is winning them this race. Oh, got eight mana. I can attack with bubble smuggler. But then I don't have the stuff that I need in grave or. Forensic Researcher or Crime Stopper Sprite. I really need one of those to happen. Three mana for Crime Stopper Sprite. I could have seven mana up without using Researcher, which is four on attacks. Four on attacks, three on Sprite. I could jump attack with one of these just to have evidence in my grave. It's weird and probably wrong. I guess I'd do four on Red Herring Sacket. Still play a Sprite, but the Sprite won't stun. But now Researcher can stun. Okay, Accusation is a great draw. Actually getting rid of Crime Stopper Sprite now, because I have the mana for Reasonable Doubt, or tapping something with Researcher, but I don't for Crime Stopper Sprite. They're at 12 here? 
They can put me to five, and then I can counter a card, tap a card, and try to kill them on the crackback. I feel so unlikely to kill them on the crackback, though. I do get to chump, like, one thing here, so I'm just gonna let them in. And hold up the reasonable doubt. Okay, Analyst can't be countered. Oh, and that's it? Shoot. Man. Okay, I could still tap Analyst here. 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, 11, 12 damage on board. Holding up a reasonable doubt. Just go for it at this point. If they have out cold, that's uncounterable, which is so annoying. Like, I get it, getting around the ward is cool, but getting around literal counter spells is frustrating. Oh, I guess I don't actually have the mana because I'd have to flip this to do the full damage. Shoot. So what, what do I have the mana for there? Eight, nine mana total. I can kind of just send in for six and that's it. Yeah, I should have kept the evidence and not tapped the analyst there. And they have make your move anyway. Okay. Well, that re-gives me the six evidence. Well, no, I can still only use it once because it's all in individuals of two. We're in ghostly prison. <laughs> yeah, another ghostly prison with inside source. Okay. So, Ghostly Prison MVP. We need them to not have Ghostly Prison next game. I definitely could have played this out better. The Ghostly Prison math just completely ruined my... melted my brain there. Trying to, like, flip Bubble Smuggler and also attack with the whole board. Not realizing I couldn't do that, because I have to spend the 6 on that, and then 2 on everybody. I don't think it would have mattered, though, because it's just so much mana to get any damage in. Um, and now we're, we're straight up dead? I guess not straight up, because I can tap again for a turn by putting this in my grave. Play this face down to try to draw a new hand, um, but then I don't get to hold up the counter. But I do need to draw a new hand to find a way to permanently deal with Defenestrated Phantom. More flyers. Yep. It's a detective as well, so they can lethal me with that with Inside Source. Um, do I have any way to draw cards? I've got uh, Codebreaker and that's it, so I've got to flip Codebreaker and Prey. And that's dead. We tap one of the creatures and take five from the other. Alright. Game three. Ghostly Prison is an absolute nightmare in this matchup. Looking for that to not happen. I don't think there's anything in blue-red we can side in against that. It's just our one our one of counterspell here. Yep, we'll run it back for game three. A little flooded here, but if Furtive Courier sticks around, then it can get us out of that. 
be great to have as your one creature with a fave flight and unauthorized exit to double protect it if they don't kill it the turn we play it. They've got one turn to kill it. And then we'll have fave flight up for the rest of the game. If they kill it on that turn, we're, we're pretty much dead in the water, but if it sticks around, it's a very good game plan. Hmm. Don't hate just slowing them down here, but I'm going to keep the exit with the uh, Fae Flight in the hand here. I don't think I can wait till turn 5 when our opponent started with turn 2 Neighborhood Guardian. Sitting here and waiting till I can play Courier and Fae Flight in the same turn is not going to get us there. Okay, Shock is very reasonable. My issue here is that I can't Shock the Neighborhood Guardian and still hold up Fae Flight to protect the Courier. I think we kind of have to go shields down then. Alright, at least we have another creature. If Courier's dealt with, it is significantly worse, but it is another creature. The ghostly prison back again has just already immediately ruined our plans again. Because if it weren't for ghostly prison, like, we would have Faith light up right now. Okay. Yeah, and because of Ghostly Prison, if I want to keep doing the draw discard, that means I don't get to play Smuggler while holding up Fae Flight. I can only do one or the other. Uh, we have enough action now, though, that it's not the absolute end of the world if Courier dies from here. Right, because we're going to have a 6-5 to attack in with the Ghostly Prison. Which is A-OK. -okay. In fact, probably just better. Spend two mana to hit for six a turn instead of two to hit for three a turn. Once our hand is actually decent, which it is now. We do have to skip a turn of attacks to flip up the, the bubble, though. their own face down. I don't remember what their face downs were. I don't think we saw a lot yet. Those first couple games. Reasonable doubt's a fun one to hold up. Do we let the courier trade for the face down? I guess we are working our way towards a 6-5, so I wouldn't, wouldn't absolutely hate that. But I also think just play research or hold up instance is fine here, so we'll do that. Get the mana set up for future attacks, also the six mana to flip the bubble. Alright, looks like we're about to force them to have two. Never mind. Oh. I really don't think that's that bad for me. To be worth a Fae Flight or a reasonable doubt. Oh, you know what's kind of sick here? Unauthorized exit, the ghostly prison. That could be our end game. Or we could try to unauthorized exit, then reasonable doubt it, but they'll probably cast it as their first spell for the turn. Never mind. Defended straight and phantom costs them seven mana total here, so putting that back in the hand is a really big deal. I would like a sixth land, but also Gadget Technician is really good. Two swings of a seven power flying bubble smuggler will kill them. So that's a plan now that we're just letting them keep Ghostly Prison. We don't want to main phase it because we can't attack in any way. So we might as well hold up all of our instants and give them less opportunities to find removal for the 6-5, because once we've flipped it, we can hold up Fae Flight for the rest of this game. There's going to be one end step where they could kill the Bubble Smuggler, but from then on, uh, they can't. So let's hope they don't have the kill this end step. Hmm. 
Okay. And here we go. Three attacks. Two attacks. Mm. If I fla Faith Flight, it kills them in two attacks. If I reasonable doubt, Faith Flight is more likely to counter removal next turn because they have another major move they could actually afford the two mana for reasonable doubt next turn. <sighs> Not a reasonable doubt here, and I'm going to suspect it. So we'll have a menacing flyer once they try to kill it again. But it will take two more turns to kill them now, since I didn't just Fey Flight first. But now we can play around Makeshift Binding. Okay, if they had three removal spells, we couldn't do anything. Reasonable Doubt... The Fae Flight, yeah. Well, we couldn't have stopped that. God. I'm gonna suspect the Researcher so we can't block here. Okay. Man. Yeah, I think that Binding is, is enough here. Okay, Crime Stopper Sprite's big. I can't do this in anything else this turn. We better to get my threats down first then. that there's a freaking ghostly prison so it's not like I can attack with all these until I'm not casting anything else that turn actually be happy to see the phantom get flipped here because then I don't have to pay for ward which means I can spend that man on ghostly prison instead but they're not going to do the thing Person of interest actually just not great against ghostly prisons, so I am just going to get in. One, two, three, four, five, six. They got the out cold. Yeah, out cold's really, really good. This kind of matchup. Well, hope for one. Vigilante off of the draw, off the clue, and a second makeshift binding. Now our goal is to get them to two life. I think it's slightly better to do this than get one more damage. Yikes. Due diligence is very good in this exact kind of position. That's 11 damage. Jesus. Well, it's not like 
the 2-2 can get in at all anyway. And they've got the mana to flip up the Phantom too, so they've got a... Uh, got a 6-5 flyer on blocks. More non-creatures, or more non-lands here. More spells. I think this ends our run. It's just, they would have been so astronomically dead either of these games without the ghostly prison. But we just cannot get through it. I did have a bounce spell that I could have used on it, but... I'm quite confident it was correct to bounce Defenestrated Phantom in the position we were in. I think we played this out as best as we could. It's just absurd stuff from Ghostly Prison, really. It's too many blockers. I can only attack with three creatures. It doesn't matter that I have a way wider board state than them when I can't attack with it. If I hit the land, I can't attack with three and hold up a shock, but with the seven six, a four five doesn't matter. Just blocked by the seven six. My other creatures get blocked elsewhere. I don't know. The vigilance too. We need one of our dramatic accusations. We are running both of them here. Could also hit another Crime Stopper sprite. So three main outs. We need to lock down the Phantom and get in with flyers. So our game plan is to set up as many flyers as we can, and that's about it. Could block with my entire board and shock and then it's these four creatures versus a four four and a three two if they have zero interaction it's exactly seven toughness so i'd have to lose everybody to the seven power Really don't think that can be worth it. I think we need we just need an accusation. Or a crime stopper. <laughs> I have zero instants and sorceries in my grave. Oh wow, they exiled this much stuff. Oh, I exiled some of it because I needed uh, evidence. That's right. So Codebreaker's pretty, pretty bad right now. I mean, it's just it's full cost. Now we're dying very fast because they hit their second phantom before we hit our first accusation. Or anything like that. I'm gonna have to discard my old hand anyway, so let's shock the tracker. And 
That's not accusation. Okay. They do have a second phantom they can attack we attack me with now. Six mana. They're at nine. I can attack with six creatures, but I need to not die. Better to hold two mana up. Do I have anything for two or less at instant speed left in my deck? No, I've hit all my instants already. Just throw this under the bus. Resolution order. First I want to draw the card, then I want to draw this card, yes. Okay, Exile Criminologists. Okay, Red Herring gives me another unblockable courier attack. This does mean Person of Interest just dies now. I need to block with those two. Do I have another herring in the deck left? No. But if I can get three damage anywhere else, that'll be big. Which I can't. They go block, 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 block. They have exactly the blockers to block everything else. Unless they do that. But then... Um, they just let the snoop through and take four instead of three, which is still very alive. I mean, we have one less attacker, but they have one less blocker. That all balances out. Have to jump block Phantom next turn. Send in with the three. I do still get in for three, but they're going to just kill the courier if I do that. I don't think I have anything left in my deck to trigger the courier at this point. But if I hit an on land, I do have a dramatic accusation and a crime stopper sprite left that could maybe find a wide lethal next turn. I do have one more draw. Okay. Okay. think we have to hit the flyer so I don't die to removal, and I can hit them for one a turn no matter what. Oh boy. Oh boy. I can kill my flyer if they send him with Vigilante. I'm kind of forced to double block there. Oh god, the inside source there. If I poke them for one in the sky, they attack with everybody and I die because they put... Well, no. If they attack with everybody, one of them will be a 1-1. One, one. But I don't have anything that adds to my power at all anymore. Just needed to hit like Crime Stopper or something here. See a good point of attacking more. I do have the mana to attack with the whole board. 
They kill a 3-2 for free. They have to go chump, chump, go to one, but then they just kill me with Vigilante, so what was the point? Unless our only hope is to just top deck a creature off Courier. Which it might be, because realistically, if we just pass here... Realistically, if we pass here, they have their own attacks that are horrendous for me. Just top deck like an absolute god. I don't know, maybe we can make them think we have something in hand and they don't go for the attacks. Like, we we hit Crime Stopper's Sprite to shut off the Vigilante, then we can attack with the whole board and try to win. Okay, well, we lose no matter which play we make then. If they just hit Coerce to kill. Ah, uh, it was so hard fought. Everything in my power to beat this ghostly prison is just not enough. All right, we could have, like, if our draw sequenced just a little better, we were so close to getting there. It's like one more stun on the vigilante and boom. So, I mean, this goes back to the draft itself. If we had some out colds. We win this game. Single copy of Outcold on many of these turns would have been completely game ending. Uh, yep. We are forced into the triple block to not die. And there's nothing in our deck that saves us now. Die at a time for fun. Alright, actually die on board to the flyer. Oh boy. Well, that's a bummer. I don't think we played it out uh, perfectly. I don't think there's anything I really could have done game three there, but game two could have certainly played tighter for sure. I don't think that's the round. That was the difference between us making it to draft two or not. I think our, our draws versus theirs. We were kind of destined to lose that round. I think really what it was, we would have still had a chance if we had played better in round one. Round one felt like a winnable round. I don't think our deck could do a lot against that ghostly prison. So here we are. So definitely a pretty big bummer here we are one and two which means even if we win next round there is no way we get to play the arena open day two draft number two big bummer there but again i'm not particularly unhappy with how i drafted this deck i think we are definitely in the right colors honestly i don't think we could have really ended up with we definitely could have ended up with three out colds, but I think we could have ended up with one reasonably and two maybe. Think looking back on the picks, we took a um a person of interest over an out cold, and I think that was the correct pick with the information we had at the time. The one pick where I didn't take an out cold that maybe I should have was taking this meticulous archive over an out cold. Because that was a little speculative. We still really didn't know our colors yet. And if we just headed a little deeper into blue, one of those colors, um, I think that was a pretty reasonable pick. Um, I think it's a little more likely that we actually play an out cold than a meticulous archive, since we would need to be doing some amount of splashing for white to really want the archive. So I think that was the one pretty bad pick this draft that, that we should have done differently. Out cold over meticulous archive. Just having that single copy of out cold in this deck, as we saw in that round, I think could have won that round, so drafting a little differently, we could have won round three, and uh, playing a little differently, we might have been able to win um, round one. We would have gotten into a little top deck war in the end, so yeah, you never know. You never know for sure on either of those things, but definitely a learning moment. Gotta find something you could have done differently with your losses, something to learn from. 
uh, if you can. Sometimes you just get really unlucky, but I think there were some things we could have done differently here to get a shot at the day two. Again, I don't think I did anything egregious or any massive, massive um, punts or anything. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, letting myself get, get counterattacked for onboard lethal is is kind of a big punt, but uh, that, that just happens sometimes. That's not like... I, I don't think there's anything like deck building wise or general game theory wise that's gone severely, severely wrong here. It's just like... Uh, numbers how do they work you know so it's it's definitely stuff i can i can learn from for future games and the stuff that i'm more interested in learning from is the draft theory kind of stuff of like yeah getting those out colds more aggressively i think i was also just feeling overconfident because we saw like three out colds in a row in pack one i was like well if they're just going to keep getting passed around we can definitely pick one up later it's not the kind of card that's very powerful to have three of even the second is diminishing returns the first is the one that's really really good so probably just got too overconfident thinking we could get one anyways that is it we're out of contention for day two draft two but we can still get a little bit more gems here 1000 gems is such pity prizes it really doesn't matter what happens here for the last game but if nothing else we can find out if we would have won if we would have made it to draft two had we made some different draft or gameplay decisions if i lose this game and there's nothing i can do about it then we would have just went 2-2 anyway so we'll see we'll see as we head into round four the final battle of the arena open day two draft number one here we are for round four. Arena's got them jokes again. The quad mountain hand in the 9-9 split deck. Um, Still got technician on three, flip it up on four, whatever. Just gonna roll with the openers this time around. It's for a thousand gems. We're out of contention anyway. If I can win off of some rough openers and uh, destroy this round, then I will be very sad that uh, we potentially punted away uh, round one, potentially misdrafted away, game three, or round three. So our opponent starts with a hedge maze to surveil away Rubble Belt Maverick, which is really nice. A little combo there, get instant value in the graveyard. And we draw a blue spell, which is not a good combo with Quad Mountain. Reasonable doubt the disguise. Nope. Set up some mana with a topiary panther to grab whatever basic they need here. Grab a swamp. They are at least soul tie, blue, green, and black. So just one of these green-based, very multicolor decks that gets to scoop up every bomb rare that runs around the draft pod. Splash them all in. Kind of matchup where we definitely need to do our best to lean in on the aggro aspects of our deck. There is the blue source, and two Crime Stopper sprites in a row is actually pretty appealing against a 2-4 flyer. That is quite an annoying blocker. And then whenever we run out of tap abilities, we just fully shut it off with Accusation. If they have ways to sacrifice it for value, that'd be really good against Accusation, but if they don't, then Accusation's really good against it, because it does have a graveyard ability, so if we can deal with it without actually putting it into their graveyard, and that is even better. All right. I believe it's just time for another sprite. Keep expanding our board while we beat down. The one issue with doing this is it does play into a board wipe from our opponents if they have the five mana destroy all creatures out of black. But playing Accusation plays into the board wipe as well, because then we're spending removal on something that's going to get blown up anyway. So, we either do nothing this turn, if we really want to play around the board wipe, or uh, we play something that's going to get hit by it either way. So, I might as well get more power on the board, so if they don't have the board wipe, we can probably just kill them pretty soon. They do have the board wipe, we can't win this game. 
They have two 1-1 bats in the grave, four cards left in hand, and all we have is one removal spell. Looks like it's a face down, and it is a face down. There's no two mana face down that's going to flip up and eat a 2-2 or a 2-1 for free, so we'll lock off the onlooker and send the whole team in. Hit for five, trade the code breaker off. That's how things are shaping up. Gain some life, that's really good for them. Buys a little more time, keeps them at five here, which is big. We are flooding out. But apparently they are too. If they had anything that would interact at all with a single one of our creatures, then they were fine there because I had nothing left in hand, but apparently they did not. We are 1-0 and o in the final round. So they're a green, blue, black, splashy deck with Topiary Panther for fixing. With a green, blue, rare, dual land for fixing. They've got that um, vampire thing that's annoying. I like the double accusation still in here. Against that, they didn't seem to have a lot of removal, at least that we saw yet, so... We're not uh, insta-throwing Fae Flight in like we did in some other matchups. I think pretty much every other matchup. I think we are happy to run it back here, but we will be on the draw. So we can swap out a land for an on-land if we want to. Because we'll be drawing towards our lands on curve a little faster than if we were on the play. A 16 land deck on the draw draws its lands quicker than a 17 land deck on the play by a tiny bit, I'm pretty sure. Because a whole extra draw step is pretty big. I don't know what we even put in with the information we have right now, though. Just another criminologist at the top of the curve, I guess. Sure. I guess. Maybe try out the... Uh... The 5-5 five, five, that can give itself Menace be an option. Our opponent doesn't seem like the kind of deck that... I mean, we barely got any information, but... Um, seems like they might not be the kind of deck to get a lot of blockers on board, just a couple big ones. So if they have, like, one really big blocker, having one Menace creature is pretty, pretty good there. They got the turn one Hedge Maze again. This time, they are going to keep the top card of their library. Here comes the red herring. Get in there, cluefish. One fish, two fish, red fish is the cluefish. Face down technician, face up person of interest, face up criminologist, face up criminologists. We've got a curve. We're just slamming power on the board every turn. Our opponent needs to assemble some blockers. And Fairy Snoop works. They don't get the... Well, never mind. I'd say they don't get the value from it, but... It does block some damage now. It doesn't block damage this turn, but it will in the future. And I do like Person of Interest over Gadget Technician now that they have a 1-4 on board. Getting a 1-1 one, one token against a 1-4 is not the greatest. But if we have a gigantic field of two twos, all they can do is bounce off of one of them. They don't get any free kills. Really hoping they don't blank. Well, never mind. And say hoping they don't blank our red herring by the time we play a criminologist. Because if they play like a blocker that's big enough to eat the red herring for free, once we have five mana, that's fine. Because then I sack the red herring for free. Okay, so now they can just double block Crime Stopper, so I can't get in, so we play Person of Interest, right? Yeah, I mean, a Technician can, and then it trades into Onlooker, but that's pretty bad, so let's just still play the Person of Interest. Well, this is not good. Just these two blockers alone, and I already feel like we're not really favored, because if our opponent can just stabilize and stop taking damage, 
Green, blue, and black, that's a color trio that is likely playing for the late game and has a lot of big, explosive, high mana value spells to top things off. So if they could just stall things out, stop taking damage for a bit, it's going to be a really bad time for us. Alright, another Crime Stopper Sprite's a pretty big deal. Could attack with everybody, they get a free kill on the 2-2. Two -two. They bounce there and just take two. Probably not worth it to sack this just to deal two to them. It's criminologists. Okay, shock is very big here. So I'll play a technician and we'll just shock to win a fight somewhere. Against a 1-4 and a 1-3 flyer, I'm going to pre-combat the technician and just sacrifice the thopter. Arena telling our opponent we have shock. <laughs> Holding with one red mana up. Alright, get rid of the big booty dual leech. Because getting rid of the onlocker uh, lets them play some bats later. Which I don't like. And also dual leech is bigger. We've got enough ground troops that I think just the size of the creature is the most important thing. The flying isn't super relevant at this point. Undercity Sewers, they have two on-color duels, pretty sweet. Well, that's a board wipe, if I've ever seen one. Oh, and they have the evidence, too, probably, to exile all of our Crime Stopper sprites or something. Yeah. Or all our Criminologists, or all our Person of Interest or Technicians or something. Yep. Let's see what they want to exile all of. Hopefully it's not Crime Stopper or Criminologists. No, it's Crime Stopper. Rough. They do let me draw a card for exiling a card from my hand here, but it's probably just swapping out Sprite for a land, which is terrible. Really happy I sacrificed the Thopter, the first Criminologists at this point. Oh, they're writing down my deck right now. While they're at it. Ooh, okay, well, we hit a draw. Six, uh, seven is not enough to do both these, so... I mean, we... Criminologists first, most expensive play. Uh, I'm gonna hold an island against unscrupulous agent potential. The two mana one, one that makes me exile a card from hand. If they have the discard too, I'm hosed either way. I also kind of like dropping Criminologists first because they already know about it. Coerce to kill? That's pretty annoying. You're late. You're one turn late. If you were here instead of the island, that would have been beautiful. Then I play Technician and hold that up. Well. Would have been exactly enough mana too, right? They only have one mana up. At least Technician trades pretty fairly with Coerce to Kill. Where just the Thopter trades for the Death Toucher. So we don't get like super two for one to buy it. I mean, I guess if they make more non-clue tokens, then Criminologists does give them some value. Off the free, the free sack draw. Or if they need all six mana for other stuff, then... Yeah, they can attack and sack the clue for free and get a small amount of value there. Exactly too much mana. Reasonable doubt, I hate you. So now we just die to bomb rare. Which is what we expected when they started stabilizing early. Did take the bomb board wipe to get there, so... I think we did well, even if we're absolutely getting destroyed now. 
We did what we could. I could still get there with flyers. It'd be real difficult. I'd have to just go runner, runner, flyer, 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 flyer here. Now land is not that. Nor is a 2-1. I guess they did exile most of my flyers. All my Crime Stopper sprites, so I only have a Gear Drake and... A fairy snoop left. So I already hit both technicians as well. Yeah, no, I don't. Th I don't think we can turn this around, but we'll see. It's gonna be like a crocodile for something that just eats technician, but at least I don't take a million. It is a cloaked card, so it could also just be a land or something. Wow, it's Persuasive Interrogators. Well. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dead on the crackback. I don't hold up a blocker. Trump Interrogators draw a card, I guess. That can't be countered. I have to draw instant speed, interaction, and not a land. All right. One and one. Heading into game number three. Don't really think there was much we could do in that game. I think we played it out fine. Their deck just got to do its thing that time around. Board wipe into bomb rare. So. Yeah, I guess we just... If we ever have reasonable doubt, we really want to try to have that up once they have five mana for potential board wipe. That's about all we can really hope for in this matchup. Like, uh, either they don't draw the board wipe and we just aggro them out like we did in game one, or if they do have the board wipe, we can have the, the counter spell well timed to keep our board around them in the game, maybe. So, just play around it a little bit. Head back in for the final game of uh, the Arena Open Day 2 Draft. I will let the gods decide my fate. Show me the mountain. Honestly, even an island in this hand is good. Play all these. But turn one top deck mountain is the best draw on the deck. And we hit a 4-mana red spell, which is one of the worst draws in the deck. They played both their on-color duels, turn 1, turn 2 this game. A pretty good opener. Surveil at the top each time, so they're already drawing exactly what they need. We didn't even draw land in the first two draw steps, let alone a mountain. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything, but I kind of need to surveil at this point. <laughs> yeah, that has to go in the trash. Another three mana spell. Okay. We can get this flipped that can dig for a land. So we start with that. And they got the turn four Vanifar against, like, no spells, basically. All right, well, like, I guess if this round mattered, we probably would have mulliganed this last hand. But even then, we'd be on a mull to six against turn four Vanifar and perfect mana, so... 
feeling like this was probably going to be a 2-2 even if we played perfectly or a 2-2 if we drafted perfectly. If we drafted, played perfectly, and got slightly luckier, we could have made it to, to day two draft two, but that is the beast of competitive magic. You have to play super well. You gotta draw super well. You gotta draft super well. And if any of those parts fall apart, then you could be out of it. And today, all three of those parts fell apart a tiny bit. We drafted pretty well, not super well. We played pretty well, not super well. Um, in that there was only that one game where we made a massive punt. That's pretty well for me. Usually it's a massive punt every game. Um, and then we drew... Honestly, I think our draws is probably the worst part of today. I think we drew worse than we drafted or played. <laughs> but uh, had we played perfectly, had we drafted perfectly, we still would have probably day two'd. I think we could have pulled out a 3-1. If and only if I had an out cold or two in this deck for the round against Ghostly Prison, and I played out round one correctly and didn't get domed for eight, and then also won that top deck war. Because again, assuming I did play that out correctly, it still takes them a few turns to die. So they have plenty of time to just draw better than us. So. Alright. One and three. Pretty big bummer results here, but... I am... Again, I'm happy overall with, with where I decided to be in the draft pod. I'm cool to be in blue-red, and I'm happy that the things that we could change are are things that I think I've, I've generally noticed and seen here. Like, I'm actually seeing stuff to learn from instead of it being super nebulous. It's like, yeah, Out Cold Over Meticulous Archive, I think, was probably the worst pick of the draft. And, uh... And send in and get lethal crack backed on board was probably the worst play of the draft. <laughs> so there were big key moments to learn from here, which is nice. You don't always get that. So uh, I do. I do enjoy that. I do actually enjoy that. Obviously, I don't enjoy playing poorly, but I'd much rather play poorly and see exactly what I'm I'm doing wrong and can improve on in, in the future, or draft poorly and see exactly what I'm doing on wrong and can improve in the future than um, draft or play poorly and just not even notice until I'm like editing the video or something like that and then be like did I is that the point where we could change this around which is what it feels like usually happens okay they had the hex proof trick too so I mean this game was already over and didn't matter so we'll we'll move on from there yeah that'll do it sad ending for sure but at least we already knew we were out of contention after last round, so not that sad we lose that that final round. And that final round, uh, unless our Mold of Six gives us a really good hand, I think is the kind of guaranteed loss round of the draft, where even with the out colds, even with the best build possible in this draft pod, we probably lose that matchup when they had the board wipe into the Vanifar game two and the turn four Vanifar game three. Our draft pod didn't really give us access to much removal that could really deal with Vanifar. Sure, I could Accusation if I mold to six and had Accusation in hand, but they would still get two two twos off of it because they'd get a two two the turn they played it. Then I'd Accusation it, um, and then it would still take me another turn to shuffle it back. So they'd get another two two off of it before I deal with it, and that's still back breaking. So feel like the last round was the guaranteed loss. But again, round one, if we play perfectly, potentially turn that into a win. And round three, if we draft perfectly, potentially put that into a win. And that was our route to day two, draft two. But it was not to be. It is one and three, 1,500 gems. Here's one final look at the deck. Um, again, I have looked over the draft a little bit in between games. I've been doing a lot of stuff off, uh, off screen, thinking about things, you know, the notepad, keeping notes on everything my opponents are playing and everything. But I also have looked back on uh, the draft history um, in between rounds here to see every pick I made throughout the draft. And once again, I, I'm pretty happy with how I drafted this one out. I think 
you know, pack one, pick one, mutation was fine. I, I was considering out cold pack one, pick one over mutation just for being colorless. So I guess that was my other opportunity to find an out cold. If I was completely like omniscient and I knew the future, then we could have started pack one, pick one out cold. Um, pack one, pick two, I took hard hitting question over out cold, the cheap green removal. Again, we had a green blue spell in the deck. We weren't locked in on anything yet. And hard hitting question, I think, is slightly better than out cold if you are in green blue exactly just for that raw efficiency. So I think that was a reasonable pick to make at the time as well. But if I was omniscient and knew we were going to be blue red, that was technically another opportunity to take out cold. But again, those first two opportunities, repulsive mutation over out cold and hard hitting question over out cold, I think were reasonable. It was really the pick for meticulous archive over out cold that I'm like, yeah, I don't think I should be as high on those dual lands as I was this draft. I just, uh, I haven't been really high on the dual lands previously, but I just I started watching a, a few uh, LSV drafts and he's very high on them. And I'm like, yeah, maybe. But I think I should just stick to my own like drafting style, because like. Part of being high on the dual lands stuff is being much more open to the splashier, more multicolor kind of decks and much more open to pivoting around during the draft pod, which is like a much more LSV thing than a me kind of thing. So knowing myself. Out cold is so much like more likely to end up in my deck than meticulous archive. So I think out cold is just a better pick for me, even if meticulous archive would be a better pick for a player like LSV there. So yeah, yeah, pick four was our one really good opportunity for out cold. But then after that, the only other one we saw was in the pack with person of interest, which super happy to take a pick six per person of interest. I don't believe we saw another out cold basically for the rest of the draft like maybe like a pack two early pick we took a shock over it or something like that but yeah pick three we took a shock over an out cold but then they were gone so yeah that's one more little look over the draft i don't know i don't got a, nothing else to do because i'm not doing draft number two so might as well spend some time thinking over the draft I think it went pretty well overall. We just could have had another out cold that would vastly improve the deck. And uh, gameplay, the only big thing we did wrong in gameplay was not uh, doing math of numbers and attacking it and just dying on the crackback. That was obviously, obviously wrong. We'll, we'll take it. 1,500 gems from the event and... They do these arena opens pretty much once a month now, so there'll be another Murders at Karlov Manor arena open sometime, probably around the start of April. So we will have another shot, maybe get into day two, draft two. But for now, that's going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and you're interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. Other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.